Welcome everybody to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV nerd and behind us some updates. Uh, technically a new floor plan, but an update to its predecessor. This is the new 340RLK, RLOK. Triple slide with a bedroom slide, opposing living room slides, and an outside camp kitchen without a bunkhouse. Because that's the thing. Like, if you look at this, you're like, I don't care about a camp kitchen. I'm about to tune out. Hold on just a second here. They make this floor plan two different ways. And I've got footage of the other one. If you want no camp kitchen, you want all the windows on the door side of the RV, they make that too. But this is for some folks who like, I want to spend some time outside. I want to be out there, you know, by my picnic table, hanging out on my campsite. But maybe you want a lot of space because you're seasonal, like snowbird sunbirding or maybe you've got like a uh, you know a park site that you go and visit from time to time but you don't just live in the camper that's where this one's for right here what's interesting about it it gives us some pretty respectable window coverage on the back of the RV and both the dryer side and the poop side of the camper which is a very high level technical term by the way you've got a decent awning space up front it doesn't have dual awnings but with the camp kitchen door you've got a little extra shade I suppose although that is a bit of a reach admittedly um, these have a best-in-class two plus three year warranty and something that really shocked me on this one uh, up front in the bedroom you've got either a, uh, a 60 by 80 true queen or a 70 by 80 uh, king bed upgrade which is what we're going to see today but they've they've set up the front claws in this to actually be combo washer dryer capable but by going with combo they've maintained the ability to make uh, to, to include a full front pass through storage compartment which in the world of travel trailers when you start getting bedroom slide outs they don't have a giant basement like a fifth wheel so having that extra storage that goes all the way under the front closet is really handy not to mention you've got all the storage that goes actually under the bed in the slide itself this is carpetless. It's a little bit taller than the average bear. You can get it in two different decor colors. There's some really cool things about it. It's also got a couple pretty rough limitations, and we're going to show you the good with the bad as we go through today. If you appreciate that kind of fair approach, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know what is your favorite thing on here. Let me know where they nailed it and where they failed it. What is the one thing you'd change given the opportunity? And you know, I've been doing this a while and I look at every different floor plan and I kind of say, you know, what is the purpose and the focal point? Like, why would you look at this one versus another one? And I think the, the setup for the outside camp kitchen and this entertainment center directly across from the theater seat on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place is probably a major reason you'd look at this one. That is a big old jumbotron, very handy for nearsighted folks like me. I've noticed, man, ever since I started approaching 40, my eyes has just gone to pot and it's done it quickly. Uh, the electric space heating footsie fryer toenail toast and bunion burner space heater down there doing a great job. And they're doing one of my favorite nerd preferred things when the slide floor is uh, it, it matches the main floor. To me, that just always looks really good. Now, um, I'm kind of sitting uh, back on the rear sofa right here in a little bit of a conversation corner. But what you're going to see is you've got, the windows are broken up a little bit. They're not just like, here's the windows, all in one spot. You got some windows here, windows there, windows everywhere. And as a result, you can kind of see around. Now you have your choice between a booth dinette or a freestanding table and chairs like we're looking at right there. And I'd be kind of curious, in a floor plan like this, which one would you go with and why? Understanding that, you know, the dinette can give us an extra sleeper, a little more storage. I think you're going to see the kitchen has some pretty good storage in this one. And the uh, the rear uh, sofa, by default in this, would be a jackknife bifold with storage below it. The one we're looking at today is the optional trifold sofa. More on that in a second. But as long as we're talking about options, the uh, refrigerator. You are looking at a gas electric two-way fridge in this. Um, basically, there were two main suppliers of gas electric refrigerators to North American RV builders. One of them is ending production of their gas electric two-way refrigerators. The other one says, well, if we're the only game in town, we are going to jack up our pricing so that nobody else can, uh, you know, we can make some crazy money on them. So what's basically going to happen very soon in the future, whether you like it or not, is two-way refrigerators are going to not disappear from the RV market, but you're going to see a heck of a lot less of them very soon. You do still have the optional 12-volt fridge in this one. That would be my personal preference for a big model like this. That's how I would go. You also have the choice between the farmhouse and the cottage decor. We're looking at the lighter, brighter farmhouse right now. Cottage will just be like a, a peanut butter, creamy kind of brownish, something like that, you know? But basically, uh, only the stuff that is white in the kitchen is going to change. Uh, and the, the sofas will become a little less gray, a little more brown, in case you're looking for 
a little less love and a lot more action. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> all the windows that you see are going to open for airflow, including those sofa side windows, which is really nice. Uh, the theater seat here, um, I don't think you can swap that for a height bed if you're so inclined. Um, but with the height bed on the back, I don't know that you need to. Now, there are a pair of these cup holder mount, I call them cupception swivel stands. That is yet another nerdism. I believe that makes number 37 now if you're keeping track. Because you have a cup holder that slots into a cup holder. Now, there are two of them. And just to kind of give you an idea, I've slotted the other one between the uh, the rear sofa and the side stand. Just a thing that makes sense to me. Now, they're not doing any USB plugs back here, which I would like to see. I am a fan of the United States Bees. But you've got household outlets and... I personally suspect this model will mostly be used in a park camp situation. So I think having, um, you know, uh, you know, off grid friendly USB plugs there is less of a concern, but I would still prefer to have them. So I wouldn't necessarily need to bring like little converter bricks. And it's kind of funny. It's almost inconsistent. If you look over here by the, by the table or the dinette, you can see some USB plugs between the wall and the window over there. Now it, Here's the, you know what I don't do a lot? Here is the perspective. If you are the campsite cook, here's what you're getting to see right here. Now, there is no shade for that entry door window, but um, it is shade prep, so kind of keep that in mind in case you feel like throwing some shade uh, on the neighbors. And uh, again, when you're standing here, you got kind of good views all over the place. So if you're, you know, if you do happen to move around with this big sucker, maybe sometimes you have a better view off of one side of the RV than the other. There's, frankly, really not a bad seat in the house of this one, which is kind of nice. Um, and you will see that that entertainment center can uh, pivot around quite a bit for some easy viewing. And it, it, as a matter of fact, why don't we start diving into those deeper details, starting uh, right down here with the storage all around that electric space heating fireplace. Um, it's not super deep. Like you're going to look at the storage around and go, why isn't that deeper? Why didn't they put storage behind it? Cause there's an outside camp kitchen behind it. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, now you see how the overhead doors do still have some kind of struts to hold them open. That is, uh, I, I think two adults could sleep on that hide bed. Although if you're taller like me, real talk, your feet are going to hang off the edge. You've got a wall hugger theater seat built right into that, uh, seating and kitchen slide. And notice what they did right here. A lot of manufacturers who build this layout, they will put the um, the refrigerator uh, toward the front of that slide. Well, in this one, they put the refrigerator toward the back. So you don't have to worry about um, stuff falling off the kitchen counter onto the theater seat and whatnot. But it is going to mean, without question, we are going to lose access to that refrigerator in travel mode. So I'd be kind of curious to know. You know, based on what you see, like, uh, what do you think about the kitchen layout in this one? Should they move the uh, the refrigerator forward? Although I'm looking at it, and I think when the other slide closes, I don't think you're going to have any access to anything in the kitchen on this one in road mode. But if you hang with me, I will close the slide up and check that out. I've not personally seen it yet, so we'll get to see it maybe a little bit together. Um, the cabinetry in this is all pocket screwed. You see the plywood drawers both in the kitchen slide and uh, in the kitchen island, which is kind of nice. One thing, though, where they put the plumbing in the uh, the kitchen island, you may have noticed it looks like you could put a big wastebasket down there until you actually open the door. And again, trying to be fair with you, trying to be real, because you work hard for the money, so hard for it, honey. And I want to treat you right, and I want you to know what you're really getting for your hard-earned dollar on this thing. I, I am not about uh, the concept of, like, smoke screening people. Now, we are six foot nine tall. Uh, well, I don't know how tall you are, but the RV's ceiling from floor to ceiling panel is six foot nine. And, uh, and by default, you've got a single air conditioner here. You can option a second air conditioner in the bedroom, which you'll see we've done on this RV. I frankly couldn't imagine an RV with this much cubic foot of space not having a second air conditioner unless you are specifically looking at a, a boondock kind of situation. But that's my two cents. I'd be kind of curious to know what you folks think about it. You know, my opinion isn't necessarily the only be-all, end-all opinion. Uh, a couple other things here. Nice coffee bar. 
easy reach appliance outlets. And if you notice even over here in the slide, you're seeing some wall mounted outlets, very uh, appliance friendly. Part of the reason you're able to do that on these is because this is a stick and tin trailer. One of the very unsung qualities of a stick and tin camper is because the walls are essentially hollow, they can actually run wiring in the walls to put outlets where you want them. Of course, that's never much of an issue in the island. And I have to thank one of our viewers who recently inspired the newest nerdism, um, also number 37, just like all the other uh, hundreds of them that are also number 37, the stow a toe uh, kitchen toe kick, like, so that you can really belly right up to the bar on this one. They put it, they, you know, it, it, bring in a little toe kick in on that. So you don't have to stress your lower back like every time you're doing prep work or you're sitting there trying to do some dishes. It's a, uh, it, it, it's simple and it's smart and it really shows Jayco's experience with like, I, I, I bet they're going on nearly 50 years of the industry now. And I don't know what you're going to glean from this, but I thought maybe you'd like a look with all the lights off. I don't know. Also, I'm doing this, frankly, just to help stall time and give you a bead of reference for where we're moving next. We're moving up into the bathroom, but this is a dual entry bath. And I thought actually sliding up here into the bedroom would be a good way to showcase that for you. Now, this bathroom, I suspect you're going to love it. You're going to hate it. Uh, but if you love it, great. If you hate it, leave us some notes, let us know why, so we can get some feedback back to Jayco. Maybe, with enough consistency, uh, we can, you know, provide some kind of input to them and they can update some stuff. Now that is a fairly fluffy, friendly toilet situation going on right there. And one of the things that I'm not a big super fan on, like, it's important to, re like, it's important to remember this RV is not the, the biggest, grandest, highest, endest thing of all. If you will, if you like this kind of layout, but you want all the widgets and whiz bangs, look at a Jayco Eagle. That's going to be a flat deck fifth wheel. This is a flat deck fifth wheel layout, but it is still a stick and tin kind of camper. And it is not, you know, loaded to the gills with all the widgets. But if I could change one thing of everything in this RV, it would be to give me a, a bathroom medicine cabinet instead of just a mirror on the wall. Now, I, that wouldn't stop me from buying this RV. I could certainly uh, DIY one of those, but it would be my preference. Now, if you look up top there, that taller ceiling means I can actually, even with my shoes, I can stand right in that shower and have a nice headroom. I'm a little over six foot tall, by the way. Um, elbow room might be a bit questionable for some people and the fact that it's a radius shower might be one of those things that some folks go nope i'm out that seems to be a pretty consistent point right there but the radius shower you know because it is physically smaller in the footprint it does mean room for lots and lots of storage over here. And giving you a look inside that, you can see that they really took advantage of it to uh, its maximum capacity. Now, an idea here is uh, what if instead of a two-door bathroom, this is a one-door bathroom. So the open slot where you can see the mattress, what if that wasn't there and allowed them to kind of shift some storage over and put maybe a rectangular shower in? Would you like that idea or do you prefer it as it is, you know, right here? I don't think there's really a wrong answer. It's just more of a question of, you know, which one works for you. Now, uh, up front here, if you notice, they went with a nice deep bed slide. There's some manufacturers who go, oh yeah, it's a bed slide. Then it's only, I've seen them as shallow as six inches deep just so they can say they gave you a slide. It doesn't really feel like you get a whole lot of space. This one, you do. You've actually got room. You need to, I think you could maybe do some bedroom camper yoga in this thing if you're so inclined. Optional second air conditioner present and accounted for, sir. Uh, notice though, it is a direct dump AC, so it does not centrally duct through the rest of the camper. Just an interesting little point. Although no matter what, even if you don't add that second bedroom air conditioner, keep in mind, you will have centrally ducted vents through the entire camper. Uh, you know, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea there. Now, this one gives us that sort of fifth wheel style bedroom where you got a full on front like wardrobe and we're going to see washer dryer combo prep closet over here. Now, by default, this RV has a queen bed. Today, we're looking at the 70 by 80 king option. But if you look under that, you're going to see a couple things. First of all, the bed base is always queen size. So you can always size that down to be a queen bed if you're looking at a king option. Not to mention the fact there's huge storage under there. But this is actually an interesting point of conversation right here. Um, 
the uh, the RV has a key like system, so it doesn't use a 751 baggage door key. And if you don't know what that is, I guess don't worry about it. Basically, what it means is that not everybody has your exact key. Uh, there's uh, the the thing though is that if you can open the baggage door under the headboard area of the bed, you could theoretically climb under the bed, lift up the foot locker storage of the bed, and access the RV. Um, some folks get kind of weirded out by that, but. Again, you're pretty much going to need a specific key to do that or a crowbar. Because the thing is, no RV is really a, um, a, a a fortress. No RV is made to withstand, you know, the wet bandits from home alone. Uh, although Kevin McAllister does make a, an effective home security system. My point there is I think it's more of a theoretical concern than a practical one. But if that kind of stuff spooks you, you may consider changing that lock. Although I don't think you really need to. You may consider something else. I don't know. You may consider just paneling and partitioning that off. I just want to give you good, fair info, kind of like the way I like to close the slides for road mode. And we looked at the rest of the RV with the lights off, so I figured, why not the bedroom? Although, I, ironically, with the lights off, you're seeing less. So by showing you less, I'm showing you more, which is showing you less. And I I don't even, my whole life is a lie at this point. doesn't matter. Uh, sliding our way back here. Um, with the king bed, you may need to kind of lift the corner of that mattress to open and close the bedroom door. With the queen, that won't be an issue. If you do prefer more room to walk around the bed, or you prefer more room for side stands or something like that, definitely look at the queen bed. Or like I uh, talked about and blathered on about earlier, um, uh, if you see one of these in stock with a king bed, it is extremely easy to trim it down and slim it down on the uh, the, the bed platform and throw a true queen mattress in there uh, of your choice. Now, I may have been a little bit mistaken on this, and I'm going to need your call and your input here. I was eyeballing it from the back of the RV, and I thought that slide fascia was going to come up right next to the kitchen counter. So what that means is that, in theory, depending on your physical size and stature, but I'm just small enough that I can slide my way around here and I can get back here. But as we're seeing, the refrigerator is in its current position, non-accessible. So what this means, I, I need a tiebreaker on this. Okay, so what I'm envisioning is kind of an option A, option B situation. And uh, I'd like your input to kind of know which one you'd like to go. So currently, when the RV is fully open, the refrigerator acts as like kind of a wall so that you don't have stuff splashing off of a countertop onto whoever's sitting there at the theater seat. But that means that the refrigerator is not travel accessible. If you move the fridge to the front of the slide, it could be travel accessible. But now you're going to have a countertop right next to the theater seat. And some people don't like the idea that stuff could fall or splash off onto you. So I'd be kind of curious to know which way is the better way. Um, fridge by the theater seat or fridge to the front of the slide for road mode. Because I see benefits in both. And I like the fridge to be travel accessible. But my personal vote on this, I'll go first, is this is a model really designed more for being used when it gets there. I personally think this is the slightly better configuration of the two. But I don't know that I'm necessarily hard settled on that. So I kind of, like I said, I need somebody to sort of make my mind up for me here. Now, every RV needs a name. I think we should all kind of get together and give this one a name. A lot of times when the RV gets really big or really old, I've noticed the name people give to it is Bertha, Big Bertha for some reason. But uh, I don't know that that's necessarily what this one's name has to be. Uh, neither here nor there. Giving you another look at the, uh, the weights and the measures right there. This is a big rig. Half tons. Uh, just, uh, you know, maybe you have a half ton that has enough tow capacity to handle the sucker. First of all, the hitch weight of this, uh, may be a problem with that big bedroom slide all the way in the front of this thing. Uh, additionally, kind of keep in mind the length of this, um, a, uh, a lighter physical curb weight half ton pickup is going to be more easily pushed around the road by a very long trailer like this one. So that is why I do recommend three quarter ton and up, uh, kind of pickup for here. Uh, notice that, uh, like I, on the on the front of the backslide, they do exhaust the cooking heat outdoors, so you're not necessarily just steaming your stealth out. Your stealth? I don't I don't know. I, uh, are Are you gonna make noise? or are you gonna use stealth? <laughs> 
tankless on-demand water heater. And I like how the water heater and the furnace exhausts are both over here um, on the, uh, the the poop side of the camper. And this is a single sewer outlet rig, as you see right there. So you don't got to worry about a Y splitter or like, you know, crawling under slides to get to your sewer hookups. Very nice, convenient there. Black tank flush, hot, cold outside shower. Um, very nice docking arrangement on this one. O overall, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Now, over here, you see uh, magnet holdbacks for all of our exterior baggage doors. And this is the storage uh, we kind of saw from the inside. But once again, under the bed, I uh, brought the... Uh, swivel stands for the theater seat uh, recliner things uh, over here. Just kind of show you that's one, that's where they ship them from the factory, but uh, two, it's a handy place to travel with them, I suppose. Although I've always kind of found you can just sort of leave them kind of sort of stabbed into squished between the cushions of the theater seat and it's going to work just fine. Now over here, this is one of the very few times they're not using a full-size baggage door over here on the driver's side of the RV, but if you look through here, you can see they are still maintaining a full pass-through compartment. And once again, that right there is a feature that not every manufacturer who builds a bed slide uh, includes. That is a very, very useful thing in my humble personal opinion. Now, if you are towing it, because this is a long rig, if you want to check your blind spot, it is prepped and ready for not just a rear camera, but a full observation suite, which means, you know, turn signal cameras, backup camera, everything. Um, you can also use that for like a little bit of a campsite security suite. So even if you're not worried about towing this thing, but you kind of want to be like, if you're in your bedroom and somebody knocks on the door, you could actually grab that monitor and you could kind of do some quick recon around your RV to check out, you know, like the four non-blondes would say, what's going on? Although that sounded like a little bit of Axl Rose doing the four non-blondes. Although admittedly, hearing Guns N' Roses do that song would I don't know that that would be necessarily terrible anyway and I kind of turned into Bobcat Goldthwait there for me <laughs> anyway speakers regular members of the RV nerd herd leave me a comment let me know what I'm about to say about the speakers so I don't have to <laughs> outside TV hookups right over here under that awning is nice and then you see that blue 2 plus 3 up there in the corner that's one of those big Jayco doing Jayco things they've got uh, a, a pretty unmatched warranty two years of coverage and three years structural you see a lot of manufacturers will have this sticker on their RV that says three year warranty it's not if you look at it, it says three year structural warranty, structural in really tiny letters. Um, Jayco does that, but they also cover the base RV for twice as long as about anybody else. Uh, the windows you notice are very tinted. There's always a sticker on these like G20 tint. Maybe I'm just an idiot and I don't know what various tint ratings mean, but I don't know, maybe G20 is a special thing. It's just they're tinted windows. They're UV resistant, which is cool. And uh, we can we can argue semantics and say this is not a camp kitchen because it doesn't have a sink. And I'm going to say, okay, you know, fair, whatever, no big deal there. But you do have uh, a little fridge outside. You've got the handy drawer space there to keep the uh, spatulas and the tongs. And then on the back here, you've actually got a, uh, a griddle included with this one, which is cool. With your uh, Jayco's, typically, anytime you get a camp kitchen of some variety... Uh, it will typically come with a, uh, a griddle to go somewhere. And I don't know the answer to this. And, and frankly, my viewers, you folks help me as much as I think I help you, if not more. Those of you who work at a factory or have some insights, why do manufacturers always have that box cut right in that little area? Are they checking serial numbers on these things? Like, what, well, what is the purpose of that? There, there's something there that I don't understand that has nothing to do with this RV tour, but I'd be kind of curious. I'd like to know the answer. Um, regardless, looking at this one, you don't see a ladder, but you also don't see a ladder mount. The good news is this is still ladder prepped. J flights are built prepped in the rear wall for a uh, basically a, a built on ladder, not a detachable ladder. And that is an available option on this one. It's actually an option I would have preferred to see on this one, but I am not the person that builds and specs out the inventory for this store anymore. That used to be the case, but it is no longer. I am pretty much exclusively now just your friendly neighborhood RV nerd. Um, a couple other cool things here. You've, uh, along with the, uh, the potential for cameras, you've also got turn signal safety lighting. Um, and a couple more things. Let's see. Let's do uh, three more things. All right. And then I'll wrap this up because I, I could just keep talking. There's a lot to talk about on these. I haven't really touched on a lot of construction even. 
but they're using the uh, LCI Quick Jacks. These are actually designed where uh, if you want to use like a little, you know, like 18 volt drill with them, you can do that. They have an additional stabilizer arm, so they provide excellent stability on your campsite. And if you notice, the underbelly of this is enclosed. Now these are not super insulated Arctic Four Seasons campers or anything like that. It's a spring, summer, fall kind of camper, man, you know? And of course, even though this one may spend most of its time sitting there, getting it there is still uh, reliable thanks to the fact that they are using American-made Goodyear Endurance radials, 87 miles an hour rated, just one mile an hour short of going back in time. Now remember once again, if you don't care about that camp kitchen, check the link in the video description. I'll leave you a link to the one that has nothing but campsite windows and no camp kitchen. That one actually, because of the way it works out, it does look and feel more big and open to me, which is really nice. But I do like the function of the camp kitchen outside. Don't you wish you could somehow Frankenstein two different campers together and only include the best qualities of both with none of the downsides of both? <laughs> I look at them all the time I'm like, what if I could do this, this, and this? But the problem is sometimes widget A interferes with widget B. Um, and if you'd like to check for pricing and availability, that uh, check again down in the video description. I always leave you a link there. Any of these we have in stock across the nation at any of our stores, you can see exactly how each of them are priced with their uh, specific shipping cost, equipment package, everything. So whether you're curious or whether you're serious, that's just one click away. You don't have to call and give us your grandmother's blood type to get a uh, to quote on something. So when you're ready, we are ready. We don't do hidden fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.